Okay, go ahead, Janet, pray. Okay, Janet. Uh, Lord, we thank you so much for this opportunity and to pray for uh, Sister Lisa, oh God. I pray for her health, oh dear God, that you will uh, continue to give her strength and that uh, uh, she can be able to study with us tonight. I thank you for that. Lord, uh, help us and keep her safe. Oh Lord. In Jesus' name, thank you. Amen. Amen. Okay. I'm going to share my screen. Yeah. But we're going to use the whiteboard. Okay. Now, I don't have my glasses. Well, my glasses are broke. Okay. So that's why my big head is right here because I cannot see very well. So, all right. So you're talking about general materials, right? Yeah. Okay. So what you're talking about, the big step that you're talking about, the three main steps of Bible study, do you know what they are, Lisa? The three main steps. That yeah. Go ahead. We read, we read last night. Yeah. The, in the WhatsApp, we read the three steps. In the WhatsApp. Well, no, don't look at nothing. Just go from your memory. You, if you. Uh... Oh, okay. Yeah. So, we got observation. Yes, but you are not Lisa. Oh. Uh, observation, application. Okay, good. So Better. observation, interpretation, oh, yeah. and That's application. It. Okay, so, so in observation, what are you trying to find out? What are you asking in observation? Observation of the of the, of the huh? what is that? Eyes. Yes. So observation, the question is, what do you see in the text? Okay. Interpretation is what does it mean? And application is what difference? It's like, so? What difference does it make? Okay. In other words, an observation, you're seeing things, you're interpreting it. It's like, okay, now I know what it means, but what difference does it make? Okay. Now, when you're talking about observation, there's three main levels of observation. You have book as a whole. You have parts of a whole. And you have, we can call it focus observation. Okay. So the first step of studying a book as a whole is to find the general materials. Okay. Technically, when you're studying the parts of the book, like the divisions, the subsections, and all of that, you don't do general materials. And when you're doing focus observation, you don't do general materials because the assumption is you've already read the whole book. You've already studied the whole book. So you already know what the general material is. Okay. And so the rule, the rule, but, but I like how Janet teaches the general materials because even though she's focused, she's doing it at this level right here, Janet teaches the general materials right here. Okay. And the reason she does that is because it's related to the steps that she learned when she first started inductive study at a church in the Philippines. The who, the what, the when, the where, the why, yeah. and the H, the how. Mm -hmm. So those are related to the general material. So it makes sense that Janet's doing that. Also, yeah. you're going to learn about something later on called structural markers. And Janet already knows about those. So what Janet's doing is Janet is using the general materials at the focus observation level to slowly prepare your mind for understanding the structural relationships that she's going to introduce after that, okay? Mm -hmm. 
But let me make it easy for you. How do you know that? Uh, how do you know that, that that's what I'm doing? I know my wife. <laughs> In some areas. Okay, observation of my wife. That's what it is. Mm. I need Hello, to shut the, I need to shut my door. Hold on. To shut up. <laughs> I'm on the phone, guys, on it Zoom. So unless you want to be loud. All right, y'all there? Yeah. Okay, so the rule is, there's a rule for the general materials when you're talking about the whole book, all right? Y'all have been doing First John, right? And with Dane? Oh, yeah. How many chapters does the book of First John have? How many chapters? Four. Five, five, five. Okay, good. So there's five chapters. So we'll just put one, two, three, four, five. What do you think the first chapter is about? Oh, just go from your memory. Just trust me. You'll be all right. Okay, Alisa is most. It's always talking. So I'm just <laughs> actually Lisa always listen Dane's video, so maybe she can remember, <laughs> but I don't. Okay, that's fine. So, so chapter one. What do you remember? One, tell me one thing you all remember from chapter one. In the book of John. In the gospel, the, the first, first John, first John. Yeah, first John, first John, I forgot. Okay, how does the book begin? Fellowship, uh, what is mm -hmm. that? It's about fellowship, yeah. Good, so you know the purpose of the book because about fellowship. What does it tell you about fellowship? Um, fellowship is. Uh, that's what I, I remember is lifting uh, love your brothers. Okay. Does it talk about that in chapter one? Uh, no. How does a person get fellowship? Because and, they, and who's the fellowship with? Disciple. Huh? Fellowship with, I think that in the first, uh, just, uh, it's it's this is the book of John. This John is talking about this book. First John, first John. About about. I think I heard it about there's a light, mm -hmm. and the word. Yeah, the word yes. is not mentioned as much as John, uh, the, the Gospel of John, but yeah, it's there. The word idea is word of life in that passage, so we can put word of life in the first John. Yes. How do you get fellowship with God according to First John chapter 1 from your memory? What do you have? Right, let me, let me you. Yeah, well, that tells you how to get back in fellowship. Yes. So, you know, First John 1, 9. Okay. And why does he talk about First John one nine? Because if you if you sin, because no one uh, if you sin, you are out of fellowship with God. So right. That's why. So and sin it, sin really exists, right? Yeah. Okay. Good. So how does chapter two begin? From your memory. I don't know. These things we write to you in a little children in order that you may not sin. Right, not sin. But if we sin, what's to say we have? We have the Father. Have an, Jesus advo Christ. an advocate with the Father, yes, Jesus Christ, the righteousness. And he's not only the propitiation for our sins, but for the whole world, right? So here we have him talking about the advocate. 
-hmm. We have them talking about propitiation. Um, so the cross, okay? Mm -hmm. Then he continues on and he starts talking about the three enemies of the Christian. What are the three enemies of the Christian in that passage in chapter two? Don't worry, I'm gonna get to the general materials in a minute. What, Janet? Okay, all right. Go ahead, Lisa. The, what what are the three enemies? Mm -hmm. The flesh. Well, the big one is Satan, right? Yeah, the flesh, oh, yeah. the world, and Satan. Right. The Antichrist oh. is called. Uh, it's his term here, but yes, the flesh, the world, the world, and Satan. Oh yeah. And then also in the book of in this oh, chapter yeah. two, he talks about love. Because he talks about, I'm writing you a new commandment, but it's not really a new commandment and all of that, right? Yeah. Okay. What does chapter three talk about? It's about God's love. Well, Children love love does start in their what? Children of God. Children. Okay. He does talk about children of God. So yeah, let's go with that. And two, it talked about children as well. It said, I write to you fathers, young men, children, that stuff like that. But yeah, children of God. And it says, he that's born of God does not sin. And it, and, and you're right. So children of God, that's a, good, that's a good thing right there. And I think love. Okay. Yeah. What about chapter four? Chapter four is... This is chapter four. Where it says test the spirits by yeah. the spirits. Okay, so I would put that as like a main idea. Test the spirits. Because it's talking about the false prophet. He's dealing with the, the ideas that they're teaching wrong. Okay, now what is first John 5 about so far from what y'all studied? true love that is love that's um, and it talks also about the the our our position in with God. What specifically do you remember? Um, it, it, go ahead. Uh, yes. it in, 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 in chapter five? Yes. yes. I think it's like Overcoming the world, the world. Okay, we can go with that. Overcoming. You're going to also see about prayer and about the sin unto death. Y'all have not done that one yet, I don't think. Yeah, yeah, we do. Now watch this, guys. Um, a lot of people usually divide up First John into two main ways: light. and love okay that may not be a perfect division but light focuses on his holiness right and that's the problem of sin being dealt with and the need for true teaching and the love deals with the practice the applying stuff but also watching out for false teachers and you overcome through faith now that gives you an idea this is what this is what we could say light and love are our main division okay now, this is not an accurate outline, but this gives us a thought about the book. But this is going to make general materials easier, okay? So tell me what, Lisa, tell me what the general materials are. Just name them that you remember. Uh, bio, uh, Biographical, yeah. Uh, biographical, ideals, uh, historical, uh, uh, ideological okay you already said that one uh how many a uh, five five right yes and uh, uh the historica i already said yes so if you remember them like this who 
Huh? Yeah. If you remember bi biographical as who, ideological as what, historical being uh, when, right? Or, mm -hmm. or not when, events, events yes. Mm -hmm. And then you have temporal or chronological, chronological. which deals with when. Chronological is also a time, right? Yes. So biographical, ideological, historical, chronological, geographical is the question of where. Yes. Where, location, and movement, right? One, two, three, four, five. Okay, we got them all. So if you had to pick one of these, you can only pick one. Which one would you pick for the whole book of First John? Based on everything that we've talked about. Which one would it be? Uh, number five. Why would you pick number five? Be uh, I like it because it's 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 almost there. It's like overcoming the world. No, not, not the chapter. Sorry, let me clarify. You need to you need to pick one of these green words: biographical, ideological, historical, chronological, or geographical, to uh -huh. sum to summarize what all the books about. So, which one are you going to pick? Wait. Huh? Uh, so, I'm not number three. Number three? No, no, no. Uh, uh, um, sa buong book, book, first chapter one, two, three, four, and five. Uh, ano ang nagbibigay? Ano ba yan? Uh, biograph uh, I, it talks about place or time or event, historical ba yan? No, ideological ba yan? O whole book of John hanggang chapter 5? So, PB ka sa lima. Mm. Yeah, uh, fellowship, the fellowship. Bio biographical? biographical why because there's a lot of people there right there's a lot of people there but is that the main focus is yeah, the people the main, main focus? focus the main focus. and it's not just for the one chapter it has to be you can do that you can start out well what's uh you could pick one of these but you're okay let's do that Look at chapter one, the words that we have, and pick one of these. And I'm going to write it down, whatever you pick. Okay, so chapter one, ano sa palagay mo? Sa, sa, sa five materials. So chapter Fellowship, one. light, word of word of life. Would, would that be biographical, ideological, historical, chronological, geographical? Light, word of light. It's supposed to be life. Sorry. Okay. Mm, word of life. It's wait. It's, okay. It's Is fellowship? Let's think of it like this. When you're talking about nouns, okay, a noun could be a person, place, or thing, or idea. So, is fellowship a person, place, or thing, or idea? Um. Idea. Hmm? A person. So. Well, you got to have fellowship with the person. So is this talking about the focus on the person or is it talking about focusing on fellowship? Focus on ideas. Yeah, it's focusing on fellowship. So it's ideas. Right. Okay. Ideo ideological. So look at all these words and tell me if all these words are ideological. This one that you write on the whiteboard? Yes. All the blue words. Are all of these blue words ideological? No, it's not. Why not? Wait. So... Uh, ang, hindi, uh, so, ang fellowship, ang 
Um, fellowship is idea kasi hindi naman pangalan tao. Ang light is hindi rin idea. Uh, hindi rin uh, ito ay idea din dahil hindi naman hindi na, ang salitang light is hindi naman tao or hindi naman lugar o hindi naman history. Di ba? So Lep- ideological pa rin siya. Ang word is ganun din. So number two ang um, ang um, procreation at saka yung three enemies, hindi rin yan lugar. Hindi rin yan geographical. So, idea pa rin yan. Diba? Oh, okay. So, it's it's mostly in ideological. Yes. Uh, yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. This is the thing to understand about this, okay? I'm going to make a descriptive summary in my brain and, and say it out my mouth just to give you an idea what this is. And First John, uh, First John is a book written by John where he emphasizes the need to have fellowship with the apostles and with God. He descri- God describes himself as light and also the son, Jesus, is described as the word of life. Mm-hmm. This is very important because we need to recognize that Jesus is the advocate, the intercessor. So even though John is writing so that the, his audience do not fall into a particular sin, usually related to false teaching, they must encounter three different enemies, Satan, the world, and the flesh. Yeah. And in the midst of fighting these enemies, they have to remember to always love. And they need to act like children of God by imitating him. And what this means is they must test the spirit by what they know from the word of God because there's many there's there's people claiming to be apostles that are not actually apostles and if they do this then they will be overcoming through their faith okay now do you hear the argument that i just made it's like point one you know you, you have fellowship with god point two jesus is here but you got enemies point three your children so act like it point four test the spirits right and point five you can overcome so that's an argument so Mm -hmm. anything that's an argument is ideological oh yes okay yeah so anytime you're right reading an epistle a letter Mm. it's ideological okay yes if you're reading the Gospels, it's probably biographical, but it could be ideological, like depending on how you look at it. Now, let me show you something else. The rule about general materials is you have to find, I'm going to go with the 51% rule. That's where you're saying over half of the book is ideological. You understand? Okay, yeah. So... If it, even though Janet's doing good by teaching you the steps on focus observation, because it's easier to go from a little passage and then make your brain bigger on these other thoughts. Um, uh, the thing is, is that you're, you're seeing all of them in one passage. But the reality is, is when you're looking for general materials, you're only looking for one. And you won't know what that one is unless you read the whole book. But still, what Janet is teaching you prepares you for whenever you study a whole book. Like First John, you know about, and that's why I use First John, but you could pick a book like uh, Philemon. Have you ever read Philemon? No. Janet, have you? Philemon? I have uh, people work on that Philemon before. Yeah, Philemon. Oh, uh, Philemon. What I never read that this this book. It's in the New Testament. Good, good to know. Yeah, it's in. At it. least you will you will read it. Okay, yeah. So when you get a chance, read it, and let us know what you think, and tell me what you think the general materials. You can only pick okay. one. That doesn't mean there's others present, but which one do you think shows up fifty one percent of the time? Okay. Okay. Now, so the thing is, is that the the beautiful thing about this step is the first thing you do when you come to a book and you read the whole book, like if you read all of 1 John in one sitting, 
you make a decision. You say, oh, okay, that's geographical or ideological. And, you, and that's fine. Then you go to the next step. But that's all you're doing. You're just getting your first impression, your initial impression. You're not focusing on being accurate because as you study deeper, it will correct it. So um, the next step is major divisions. Okay. Yes. Are you still okay? You have it? I'm lying down. It's okay. All right. So if I were to make a chart for the book of First John. This is going to be messy, but I think I can make it work. Okay. Mm -hmm. I would have chapter one, the introduction. Okay. Yeah. I would have the last part of John, the conclusion. Now I have done one on first John. I can show you the video later, but um, conclusion. Okay. Because usually letters have three parts, the introduction and the conclusion. Now, there's more details involved. And so this would be the main theme. Okay. So mm -hmm. we're, we're just going to call this the body part now. All right. Yeah. And then so we were going to. So basically, this is chapter one and this is chapter five. So what mm -hmm. this means is that you would have chapter one. You would have chapter two, and then you would have, I'm thinking about putting one and two together. Let's do that. Okay. All right. Now, I don't want the eraser. Draw. Okay. Why is this stuck on my eraser? We cannot get the pen. It's always eraser. Yeah, all right. So let me try to. Oh, now it's a line. <laughs> all right. So we're going to make this chapter two. I mean, chapter three. And we'll make this five. Okay. Mm -hmm. So according to this, the major divisions of the book are Roman numeral one, Roman numeral two, which is. Uh, all of this in the Roman numeral three, okay? Roman number three. Yeah, because for the conclusion. Then your sub points are going to be light and love. So th and these would be your sub points that go under two. So two will have two parts. It will be an A and a B. So the, the, you can make a chart like this, or you can turn it into an outline, okay? So here we are. One, two, three. Well, I need more room for that one. Let me get the eraser. Maybe it will be nice and let me draw again. Okay. Three, okay? So introduction, conclusion. Your sub point is light and love. Okay. Yeah. So, and we'll just write the word body here to remind us of what we're doing. Mm -hmm. So this lets us know this is chapter one. This is chapter two through five, but here it's one and two. And then this is, I'm sorry, I messed up. That would be just two, but okay. And then three through five. I'm just giving you an idea here, all right? So whenever you're doing, whenever you're looking for divisions, you can do it different ways. You can read the book, right? Get your general materials. And then you read it again and you say, oh, this chapter goes with this chapter. Or, oh, this is a big division I see here. Or you can go to Constable's notes and look at his outlines, you know, to get his major divisions. We can, we can practice that. Can, yeah, yeah, can, yeah that's, that's a, right so you can you can make outlines to make charts or you can use charts to make outlines either way 
But this mm -hmm. is the point. When you're doing major divisions, you're finding your majors, which are the main ones, and then your subpoints, minor divisions. Okay. <laughs> Okay. <coughs> point ko sa number one. Tapos, hindi ko paliwanag ulit ako na ang, 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 ang number two ko naman is yung ang, ang ibig sabihin ng divine, ay, ang ibig sabihin ng God is divine. So, mayroong subpoint naman ako doon. Da -da 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 -da. So, so na-apply ko sa lahat ng okasyong comments ko sa, sa mga tao yung, yung ginagawa ni Charlie ngayon. Diyan ko, diyan ako natuto. Pero, nang, nangyari sa akin, ay nagagawa ko yun dahil nga, dahil sa pag-practice ko sa Bible, sa Bible. Yung, book, yung book ni Philemon, yan, gumagawa ako ng upline doon. Tapos, eh, yeah, because Philemon is only one chapter. That's why some people use Philemon. Yeah. Oh. Kaya hindi mo nakita. <laughs> It is, uh, yeah. In, 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 in New Testament? Yeah, mm -hmm. yep, Paul wrote it. Um, so, the thing, have you have you taught her the descriptive summaries yet, Janet? No, not yet. Uh, no, yeah, don't. Uh, she, she will not. Um, maybe you can try now so that she can have an idea when, I, uh, when I'm going okay. to. Well, do you know that a while ago I verbally described uh, from the words that we written what I think uh, First John is about, right? Yeah. Uh, so that's called descriptive summary. Mm -hmm. That's called a descriptive summary. And it's like if somebody says, okay, what is this talking about? All right. Like for example, mm -hmm. let's Janet, I'm gonna let you be the guinea pig about first John. And then all right. So Janet, what is first John talking about? Lights and uh, you know, no, no, what is the main pro okay? Fellowship, right? Yeah, all right. Fellowship. So, fellowship, all right. Now, what is it saying about fellowship? Fellowship with the Father, okay. So, fellowship with the Father, who else? The believers. All right, believers, what did she see for Christians? Okay. Okay, Christ. That's included. All right. First John is listen to what I'm going to say. First John is written so that uh, his audience will have fellowship with the Trinity as well as with each other. Because there are false teachers present they are breaking their fellowship in doctrine. And so they need to know that sin really exists and that Jesus Christ really did come in the flesh. That's a summary for the whole book. You see how that is? You're just describing it. You're giving your first impressions. And all I did was I looked at these words and thought about those things. But just so you can see how we do it, I'll show you one a short video on it. I'm sure something uh, is talabang pag binasa mo yung Bible, makikita mo yung big picture. Yung big picture ng buong ng buong book, first John. 
yung pinakabig picture niya. So, ang pinakabig picture niya is yung ano, yung fellowship. Fellowship to whom? Fellowship to the Father, Christ, and Christians. And then, that we, ma- we must be aware because we have three, because we have three enemies. Mm-hmm. If we have three enemies, we need to One help us. God. Welcome to the Lehman Seminary. Today we're... Oh. going to be talking think, about it's this uh it's 9 37 this video is only 11 minutes long and then we're done okay 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 all right i think this will help you to see what we're doing at the smaller level we were looking at big picture stuff with the outlines with the charts with general materials because it refers to the whole book but descriptive summaries can be used at any level. Send that to the group. Okay, I will, I will, I will, I will. How to find the exegetical idea of a biblical path. Don't worry about that word exegetical idea. That's not important. Just understand that we're talking about descriptive summaries. Passage. Now, um, the reason I'm doing this is because I... In, in, in the studies that we've done at our church, we previous, recently have had a, a, a speaker come in and, and teach on this method. And I am just um, trying to break things in simple videos so that people who have um, been exposed to that can, can learn these steps one by one. So when we're talking about an exegetical idea, that's a big word, right? But this is what I want to start out with. Jesus is the exegesis of God. And, and you'll see in a minute what I mean by exegesis. Uh, John chapter 1, verse 18 says, No one has seen God at any time, but the only begotten God who's in the bosom of the Father, he has explained him. This word right here, explained, this is, uh, in Greek, it's exogenomai. And, and, and it means, it's where we get the uh, word exegesis. So think of this. An exegetical idea is the explanation of the passage. The explanation of the grammar, the history, the culture, and all of that. And whenever you're doing this process, it, it's very important that you don't get overwhelmed by all that because uh, you can get very exact with an exegetical idea. But whenever you're just learning how to do it, when you're just learning how to study, uh, the best thing to understand at the very beginning is that this is basically what I've done in other videos, calling it a descriptive summary. Now, for the people that know Greek and Hebrew and all of that, you know, there'll be more advanced videos for that. But this is just how the, the, the English student of Scripture can come to find out a, a, a pretty representative or accurate uh, descriptive summary or exegetical idea or explanation of a passage. So whenever you're looking for an exegetical idea, you want to work at the paragraph level. So I recommend you go to freebiblecommentary.org, uh, and you can see it right here, freebiblecommentary.org. This is done by Bob Utley, and this is great for online ministry and missions because you can see there's several different languages and things right here. So we're in the New Testament. We're going to be using the book of James because the the, the speaker, um, Dr. McDonald, um, he used the book of James to demonstrate what, what he was teaching. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on New Testament studies. Then we're going to click on written Bible commentaries. And then we're going to select the book of James. And then we're going to go down to James chapter 1 and select that. Now what you see right here is this is a, compar- a paragraph division comparison chart. The UBS 4 um, is, the Greek, uh, is the Greek New Testament um, by the United Bible Society. Um, Currently, I have the UBS 5, but this is still good to use. And then you have other translations. My suggestion is you don't focus on the words. You just look at the passage. So if we were going with the UBS 4, it would say that verse 1 by itself is, is one idea. And that makes sense because it's, a, it's, a, um, it's the introduction to the letter. And uh, um, it's not a paragraph in itself, but this is good to get us uh, involved in the process because I'm going to work through the book of James as we're unfolding how to develop 
the exegetical idea, the explanation of the passage in more accurate ways. Okay, so we go back to our document, and we see James, a bondservant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes who are dispersed abroad. Greetings. All right, so right here, um, our goal for this exegetical idea or explanation of the passage is to make a descriptive summary, which is another way of just saying exegetical idea. And my spelling is horrible. Um, so I, what I want to do is I want to describe the Bible world, all right? The world of the author and original audience, um, the and, and and my statements are going to be in the past tense, okay? So I'm I may kind of like pretend like I'm writing a commentary here. I could say something like this: um, James opens his letter to the um, opens his letter, or let's see, actually it'd be opened. Open. You don't have to worry about letter. past tense. By mm -hmm. calling himself a servant of God. And bond servant is clarified, but I've explained in other videos about the idea behind bond servant. A servant of God. And rather than saying his half brother rather saying uh, that he is serving his half brother Jesus he called Jesus um, the covenant name so that's referring to Yahweh um, covenant uh, covenant name and, and it does involve service as well master and all of that but we're just going with this for right now in English the servant name uh, covenant name Yahweh and then you could say um, and then Jesus Christ some people say that when you have Jesus Christ you're talking about the anointed man so Yah a covenant name who also is the anointed man. So basically he's God and man. He's the Messiah. All right. He addressed his letter to the 12 tribes. Actually, this would be something. So I'm going to pause real quick and, and show you this. Janet showed me a clip of the video that y'all made of y'all study. And in it, she was writing down the general materials. And then she was writing down your thoughts about why you believed it was ideological or things like that. And so what y'all were doing, whether you knew it or not, is y'all were making descriptive summaries. Okay. Mm -hmm. And yeah, uh, that's what I told her that uh, we are doing the descriptive summary, but we are not talking about you know, uh, the specific descriptive summary, but mm -hmm. we are, uh, I am emphasizing about the five, the five general, general materials. materials. Yeah. But I told her to, to, uh, you know, to explain why she, why it said, why she said that it is general materials. So the explanation that Lisa has is the descriptive summary. Yes, yes. He addressed his letter to the 12 tribes who are scattered. Mm -hmm. More specifically, he addressed it to Jewish Christians that ethnically are of those 12 scattered tribes, okay? He gave his greeting. 
I don't want Okay. So here you have, I have about one, two, three sentences. And you could go back and you could simplify this a little bit. Um, but basically, you're just describing uh, the observations, what you see in the passage. It doesn't have to be accurate. You just consider possibilities at this point. Because another thing to understand at this level and at this phase of it, it is preliminary. That's not spelling preliminary. Preliminary. What? No, I'm just asking Lisa if she knows what preliminary means. Maybe Lisa is sleeping already. Oh, maybe. Lisa, are you there? Yeah, yeah. Go ahead, Janet. So, do you know? Do you know what preliminary means? Which? Alam mo, alam mo ang ibig sabihin ng preliminary? It means prelim. Prelim. <laughs> <laughs> ang preliminary is yung hindi siya, hindi, uh, kung bang rough ano, draft. Rough, oh yeah. Yung parang, yun, yung yung scratch yung parang ano parang subok lang mo na hindi pa siya final nari nga parang it's preliminary 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 pre 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 investigation mga ano lang pahapiyaw ba hindi yes. pahapiyaw kung mga hindi pa hindi pa tal hindi pa yung final hindi o oh, tat final pag sinabi, it's temporary yung parang, parang ganyan temporary mm -hmm. and tentative meaning it's subject to change. Uh, mm -hmm. As you study, you will um, come to more accurate understandings of this. Now, at this point, you may be saying, okay, I see, uh, for those that were in the training, they can see how on, on the personal um, study guide, the personal study, um, study guide thing that was given out, that this relates to, you know, making a summary of the of the passage uh i can't remember the exact word it was put in there well in the, in the next video we'll be talking about how to make an exegetical outline i like to teach how to make the descriptive summaries first before i start explaining how to be more accurate with the exegetical outline and how to make an exegetical outline the reason being is because synthesis putting things together is a lot easier than analysis and so you just want to get a general feel of the passage, at least at the beginning, and then you can go in more detail and break it down. Or you can you can you can include your more detail as you're writing, just depending on on your style and things like that. But since I'm since I'm breaking this down by according to parts, I'm going to uh, deal with that other stuff in the next video. And so that's basically mm -hmm. it. So the first step we have to do to find an exegetical idea of a biblical passage is first understand that when we mean exegesis, we're talking about an explanation of the passage. Or another term for this is a descriptive summary. You go to freebiblecommentary.org, you find the paragraph divisions, and then you make your, your summary based off of that paragraph division. Here, this is it's the introduction, and so one verse is what we're dealing with right here. And then you just take it and you put it in past tense words, and keep in mind it's preliminary and tentative, and you can always shorten it down or work from there. But that's basically it. And the reason that this is helpful is because this gets your mind writing things out so that if you're teaching or sharing something with someone else, you're, you're getting the idea, the, the main point of the passage of the Bible world to describe to somebody else before you ever draw principles, before you ever apply anything. And uh, um, so it's very helpful both in studying and in communication. So – um, as I said, that's it. Um, thank you all for this time. Um, please subscribe, share this video, and let me know what you think. God bless. Okay, what do you think, Lisa? Yeah, I just took uh, it. Huh? What are your closing thoughts? 
about the descriptive summary. About anything, about what you got out of the Bible study or? Yeah, what did we learn? Mm -hmm. So, so far, what did you learn? Mm -hmm. Besides she's tired? <laughs> yeah, my eyes cannot, uh, cannot see clearly actually. Well, so we we don't need your eyes right now. You can watch the video later. We just need your mouth. T tell us, tell us, uh, uh, what uh, what you learned tonight, or what helped you? Yeah, it, uh, <laughs> the the uh, general materials about the ideas. Now, I learned uh, I learned about the ideas. Okay. Of the of, of the passage. Well, Janet will send you this video so you can watch it again whenever you're awake. You know, if you want. Okay. Yeah. At uh, ang gagawin natin, uh, we were doing after uh, yeah. that. You are the one will doing it. I just want to type. You know, like what yeah. you did. Uh, I want also to 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 do it by myself. Yeah. So that you can. Hey. Do it in family morning. Uh, what is your uh, and, and yeah? Uh, do the family morning and like yeah. what the, the general materials and why? If you if you think that family is, for example, okay, if family is like ideological, so tell us, explain why did you say that it is uh, ideological? Mm -hmm. Yes. So yeah, that person. I gotta go. Pastor Mark's gonna be here with my glasses, and I gotta get ready for work. Okay. Say hi, say hi to Pastor Mark. Okay. Thank you all. Thank you so much. How about God bless. God bless.